Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, and you know what, it's fair to say that video games based on movies don't exactly have the best reputations. For every brilliant licensed game like GoldenEye 007, there are literally dozens of soulless movie adaptations that are just rushed out of the door as lazy cash-ins. But the movie game market is undeniably huge and much larger than you're actually probably aware, because these 10 movie video games for instance largely fell upon deaf ears upon release and in the years or decades since have lived on largely as cult curiosities for fans to discover. So let's expand our horizons today as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 movies you never knew had their own video game. Number 10. Fight Club it's all too blisteringly ironic that David Fincher's Fight Club, a movie about both the soullessness of late capitalism and the dangers of toxic masculinity, was spun off into its own generic 2004 fighting game. Developed by ironically monikered outfit Genuine Gamers for PS2 and Xbox, Fight Club is a generic standard fair fighting game that's about as cynical and misguided as video game adaptations get. Quite why anyone thought that releasing a Fight Club game five years after the movie's release was a good idea is anyone's guess, and unsurprisingly, the majority of the movie's cast, save for pretty much Meatloaf and a few minor supporting players, wanted nothing to do with it. As a result, the characters played by Edward Norton, Brad Pitt and Jared Leto don't resemble their cinematic counterparts at all, which is really one of the lesser gripes about a game that is just not that fun or interesting in the slightest. This is a woefully bland and lazy movie tie-in, and it was unsurprisingly both a critical and commercial dud, hence why you're probably not even aware that this existed until now. Number 9. Wayne's World Wayne's World is undeniably one of the most iconic comedy franchises of the 1990s, but did anything about it remotely suggest that it was ripe for a video game spin-off, let alone two? That's right, in 1993 THQ published two different Wayne's World platform games, one for the Nayers and Game Boy and the other for the Snayers and Mega Drive, neither of which were very good. The first is a bland, depressingly basic platformer with virtually none of the charm that made the movie such a hit, and to make matters worse, the in-game representations of Wayne and Garth are embarrassing to say the least. The Snayers and Mega Drive versions are unsurprisingly more colourful and faithful to the aesthetics of the movie, and tout the amusingly ridiculous setup of Wayne and Garth being sucked into the arcade game Xantar featured in the film, but sadly though, only Wayne is a playable character. Just because you can do something THQ doesn't mean that you should. Not a single solitary soul ever needed a Wayne's World game in their life, and certainly not two of them. Number 8. Little Nicky if Wayne's World proved that even popular comedy movies are tricky to adapt into video game form, Little Nicky confirmed that critically panned ones are even more of a challenge. The notion of most of any Adam Sandler comedies being turned into a video game is completely baffling, and yet for some reason Ubisoft decided to publish a game based on one of his few box office flops from the early 2000s, Little Nicky. This Game Boy Color exclusive transposed the puerile screen comedy into action platforming that, while surprisingly being faithful to the movie is largely an incredibly basic, standard-issue platforming game. It does get points for featuring a mini-game where you're tasked with flinging pineapples up Hitler's asshole while he wears a maid outfit, which is actually a surprisingly movie-faithful mini-game in fact, but this is largely a game whose sheer existence is absolutely puzzling. Number 7. Braveheart Inexplicably one of two Best Picture Oscar-winning films on this list, Braveheart is one of the most successful and beloved historical epics, and say it with me kids, of all time! No matter about its historical inaccuracies and, uh, and, uh, that Mel Gibson accent. But did you know that in 1999, four years after the movie's release, Scottish outfit Red Lemon Studio put out a real-time strategy game based on the first War of Scottish Independence? Honestly, there are much, much worse ideas for video games based on movies, because Braveheart is an action-packed war film that lends itself well to various game genres, perhaps best of all to RTSs. Yet critics were wildly divided over the game's failed ambition attempting to meld the rigour of clan management sim with more exciting 3D battlefield carnage, especially with the latter's janky AI and rather sluggish pacing. You can't really accuse Red Lemon's studio of just curling out a low-effort movie game here, but as their first title, they may have taken on a little too much. After several further underwhelming releases, Red Lemon went bankrupt in 2003. Number 6. Napoleon Dynamite Back when Napoleon Dynamite premiered at the 2004 Sundance Film Festival, nobody 
could have imagined that the $400,000 indie comedy would be acquired by a major studio and end up grossing over $45 million worldwide. Even fewer people could have predicted that the film would have been spun off into a handheld game for the PSP and Nintendo DS in 2007, courtesy of movie video game factory Seven Studios. How do you adapt such a singularly quirky movie into a video game? Well, by basically creating a compendium of 30 minigames and slapping the movie's aesthetic on top of it, of course. That's the hook for Napoleon Dynamite The Game, which offers up a series of rudimentary shooting, movement, and rhythm-based minigames memorable only for their stylishly rough-hewn sketchbook visuals. It's difficult to imagine fans of such a non-conformist, unique movie as Napoleon Dynamite vibing with something this pedestrian, and why did anyone think that waiting more than three years after it released in cinemas was a good time to put this out? Beyond the cultish fans, the rest of the world had long moved on. Number 5. Platoon Unlike Napoleon Dynamite, you can't accuse developers Ocean Software of waiting too long to adapt Oliver Stone's searing Best Picture winning 1986 Vietnam War film Platoon into a video game. The year after its release, Platoon was made into a shooter for the NES, or to be more blunt, a hollowingly blatant ripoff of the recently released Contra. But more offensive than its cribbing is how utterly the game ignores and undercuts the movie's message. Stone's film is, for all of its brutality, a definitely anti-war movie, something largely ignored by this game, which translates Stone's story into a familiar blast-a-thon shooting gallery. It was generally well received by critics at the time, though. Less favourable, though, was the response to 2002 second Platoon game, which despite taking the slightly more tasteful bent of an RTS game, received wildly mixed reviews. Number 4. Seven Samurai Oh dear, this is definitely a thing. Akira Kurosawa's seminal 1954 epic Seven Samurai is one of the greatest and most iconic films ever made, and despite the tendency for video game publishers to ignore movies made pre-1970, that didn't stop publisher Sammy taking a crack at Kurosawa's film. Now, To be clear, they inexplicably acquired the rights to the movie from the filmmaker's estate to make a, wait for it, futuristic video game retelling of a movie called Seven Samurai 20XX. Yep. It's impossible to reconcile the grace and guile of Kurosawa's film with the abject tackiness of a sci-fi hack-and-slash video game reimagining, and to make matters worse, the characters have anime designs and rather than battling bandits, the samurai take on mutants, cyborgs, and other uncanny creatures. Though the game was criticised for its simplistic gameplay mechanics, most just seem stupefied that anyone decided to make a seven samurai game a half century after its release, and also thought that a futuristic update would appeal to a single human human being. Number 3. White Men Can't Jump 1992 sports comedy White Men Can't Jump was a solid critical and commercial success, but few could have anticipated that anyone would attempt making a video game out of it, but Studio High Voltage Software did just that with their very first game, which released three years after the movie and adapted the street basketball comedy into, shocker, a street basketball video game. Sadly, the licensing more or less ends with the title, as neither Wesley Snipes nor Woody Harrelson got anywhere near this and it really just boils down to being an aggressively lazy take on video game basketball. Developed exclusively for the Atari Jaguar and largely accepted to be one of its worst titles, White Men Can't Jump is basically just a poor man's NBA jam, mechanically speaking. It's easy to picture publisher Atari looking at a list of commercially successful recent movies and just throwing a dart, leading them to figure that fans of the movie were just hankering for a game. As it turned out, they weren't, and it quickly faded away without a trace. Number 2. John Wick The appeal of a John Wick video game really speaks for itself. The balletic gunplay, awesome locations, dense mythology, and badass title character all make the action franchise a much snugger fit for a video game adaptation than anything else on this list. And yet, John Wick Hex flew strangely under the radar when it was released in 2019. Perhaps because rather than take the obvious route of a third-person action game or first-person shooter, developers Bithel Games made an isometric strategy game instead. John Wick Hex was broadly well-received, its comic booky art style and dynamic locations helping paper over its rather rough animations and repetitive gameplay. A firmly above-average effort for a movie video game for sure, and though Keanu Reeves sadly didn't reprise the title role, Ian McShane and Lance Reddick did nevertheless lend their voices to their supporting characters. Even so, hopefully we might end up with a more energetic third-person action game take on John Wick one day, because the idea, well, it sells itself. 
And number one, March of the Penguins. Surely the only best documentary Oscar winner to ever get its own video game, 2005's March of the Penguins is a beautiful Morgan Freeman narrated nature documentary that was inexplicably adapted into a Game Boy Advance game the very next year. March of the Penguins is effectively a Lemmings ripoff, reskinned with penguins. You basically play God, and unfortunately not a Morgan Freeman one, sadly and must help a parade of penguins march their way to safety. Except, unlike Lemmings, there's no risk of death and the levels are so thoroughly bland that there is no fun to be had. Numerous review outlets criticize the game for being too difficult for children but too boring for adults, which puts it in the dead zone of appealing to basically nobody. Publisher Skyworks Interactive clearly took one look at the film's $127.4 million worldwide box office and assumed the game couldn't fail. But alas, it sank like a stone, both critically and commercially. Commercially. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 movies you never knew had their own video game. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I hope you're treating yourself well with love and respect, my friend, because you deserve all the best things in life. Do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. So big love to you, you massive ledge. Now go out there and smash it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.